All right, what's up, guys? I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there's this crazy thing out there. It's called um, mm, Python. It's this magical language where we could do fun stuff, and we're going to be using that today to make a tic-tac-toe game. So let's get into it. Go ahead and click Create, and we're going to call this tic-tac-toe. Go ahead and create that project. All right, let's get right into the fun stuff here. We're going to first import our random class. This is so we can generate a random choice for the CPU when they're trying to play against us on this tic-tac-toe game board. Next, we're going to say, hello, welcome to tic-tac-toe. And we're going to have a line right below that. It's just going to be a bunch of dashed lines. That way, there's a little bit of space in between the welcome statement and the actual game. Next, we have to create a few variables to operate the structure of the game. The first variable that we need is called possible numbers, and that's going to be a good old array, and we're going to just fill it with the numbers one through nine. Our game board is going to be comprised of nine different spaces, so the user is going to be able to choose um, between the numbers one and nine. Next, we need to make a game board array, so we're going to call it game board. Now, this is going to be a little bit complicated. We're going to be using a two-dimensional array, and if you've never used a two-dimensional array, we should look up how they work and, and what it's all about. But basically, it's a way that you can can store kind of like a, a it's like a matrix in a way so let me explain so a 2d array works like this here you go you have our normal array which is just you know a good old square with some slots in it and you know you, you might have a few numbers you know one two three four five you might have a few numbers stored in the first few indices of the array however you can add another dimension to it so this is a one dimensional array if you want to add another dimension you can add it like this so now you have the ability for every index, you could store some various numbers of values the other way. We have values going this way and we have values going this way. So you could store stuff here. You could store stuff all the way here and here. And you could kind of make like a, a matrix or a game board out of it. So sorry for my crappy drawing skills, but I hope you guys get the point. We're gonna be making a two dimensional array in Python. And the way that you do that, we're just gonna be filling our array with the numbers one through nine. And it works like this. So you have your first set of brackets, then you want another set. And in here, you wanna say one, two, three. Then outside of that inner bracket, you wanna do a comma and a space, do another set of brackets, four, five, six, same thing, comma, space, another set of brackets, seven, eight, nine. So now we have a array full of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's pre-populated with those numbers and you'll see how it's used in a second. Finally, we need two more variables. We need a rows variable and we need a columns variable. So we're gonna call it rows and calls or columns, you know, C-O-L-S, however you pronounce that. Rows is going to be three and columns is going to be three. And because we have three rows and three columns, just like a normal tic-tac-toe board has. The next thing up on the list is we need to create a function that's going to print out our game board anytime that we want. So no, we need an updated version of what the game board looks like, right? So we're gonna define a function to print out the game board anytime we want an updated version of it. So let's just say definition or define function, print game board. And in here we have to loop through the two dimensional array. And that's going to require two different for loops. So for the first loop, we're going to say 4x in the range of rows. And rows is three. So we're basically saying, hey, start x at zero or one and go up to three. Uh, we just need to be able to iterate three times, right? In here, we need to do two different print lines. We're going to say print and then listen carefully what we're going to say. We're going to do plus, minus, 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 plus, minus, minus minus plus and then one more thing minus 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 and plus okay and now we need to do another line it's going to be just a pipeline character and then a comma and then say end equals and then just nothing we're just going to have um, nothing inside this end thing that's just so that we can print it all in the same line and now we need our second loop for y in range and cols in here we need to print out the numbers that are stored in our two-dimensional array now that we're in our second loop we could start going through each index so we're going to say print we're going to have a blank space space comma space and then game board and then say x and then close these brackets and another set of brackets and y that way we can reference the point inside the 2d array we're going to say comma end equals and then a space and another pipeline character and then finally go outside of this second for loop here by clicking backspace once and then click out backspace again that way you're outside of both for loops right down here we're going to print print another copy of this uh thing up here and then just add a new line character so guys, thank you for following along to this point. I'm sure you're you're kind of flustered or really confused on what this is actually gonna do. So let's just go ahead and call that function and then launch our game and see what happens. So we're gonna call this function here. And one more thing before we do that, um, make sure to add a new line character right up here where this first thing is. And now we should be ready to launch our game. So go ahead and click run. And you'll notice it prints out a perfectly nice formatted game board 
with the, you know, selections one through nine. So the whole idea of this is that the user can type, you know, five and it'll put an X here. You could take turns with us and the CPU. So erase this print game board thing. And then now we're going to define another function that's called modify array. And what this is intended to do is this is going to be in charge of handling all the times that this game board array needs to be modified. So to do this, we're going to pass in the number of that the user guessed, so just num, and then a turn. So the turn is obviously whether it's x that's going or y, or sorry, x or o that's going, and the number that we're guessing is going to be one through nine. So the first thing you want to do is just say number is minus equal to one. And the whole purpose of doing that is because arrays start at index zero, zero, and, you know, if we were to say one from the user, it would think that we need to go here. But in reality, we need to subtract one and go at index zero. That way, it's just kind of like a little shift that handles that. That way, we don't have to do anything else fancy. Now, right under this num minus equals one, we're going to have a series of if and else statements to address each possible case. So we're going to say if num is equal to zero and then a if num is equal to one. And I'm just going to quickly um, go through this and then I'll explain what I did. All right, guys, here's the whole logic for the entire thing. With each if else, we're addressing each possible number. So obviously the numbers um, zero through eight because we did the subtraction up here. And then inside of each else and if statement, or sorry, if and else if statements, we need to modify the game board index. Obviously, if they say zero, which is actually one, we need to modify the very first index of the game board and we need to set it equal to either X or O, which is going to be passed in with this turn thing. You know, we need to slowly go up each index of the board. So, you know, zero and one would be right here where that two spot is and zero and two would be where that three spot is and so on. So hopefully that makes sense. Comment down below if you don't understand and I'll be happy to help you out. All right, guys. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define another few variables. We're going to say leave loop is equal to false. We're going to say the turn is equal to X. And finally, we're going to say the turn counter is equal to zero. Now, the turn counter is going to be keep keeping track of like whether it's my turn or the computer's turn. The turn variable here is going to be keep keeping track whether it's X's turn or O's turn. And leave loop is really just to end the game. You'll see in a second here. So we're going to have this game loop and we're going to say while leave loop is equal to false, we want to, you know, operate the game. So let's address two cases, whether it's my turn or the computer's turn. To handle the player's turn, we're going to say if the turn counter variable modulus two is equal to one. So if there's if we take turn counter divided by two and the remainder of that is equal to one, then it, we know it's our turn. And then we need to say else it's the computer's turn and add a little comment here. So it's the computer's turn. And then inside this if statement, we need to do a variety of things. The first thing we want to do is print the game board. So print game board, call that method. Then we need to prompt our user for a number picked. So we're going to say number picked is equal to the input function. And we're going to say with a new line, choose a number one through nine with a colon and a space. And then to convert that string to an integer, we're just going to say int and then wrap this entire thing in an integer cast. That way, you know that we get an int every time. Next, it's time to validate the input from the user. So we're going to say if the number picked is greater than or equal to one or the number picked is less than or equal to nine, then we know we have a valid uh, selection from the user and we can go ahead and modify the array. So we're going to say modify array and we're going to pass in our number picked is because that's the number that we picked. And then we're going to pass in the variable X. Actually, guys, one correction here. I just realized we're probably not going to use this turn at all because we could just pass in this X variable. So just get rid of that. Right under that, we need to take possible numbers, which is that array of numbers one through nine from up here from earlier. And we need to remove the number that we just selected. That way we are keeping track of what's already been guessed. So we're going to say dot remove and we're going to pass in the number picked. So that will go ahead and go into this possible numbers array and remove the number that we just selected. And obviously, if the number is not valid, we just need to say else and then let's let the user know so print invalid input please try again so that's going to go ahead and make sure that they know to try again because they did not pick a good number outside of both this if and else we're just going to increment the turn counter by one so we're going to say plus equals one now we need to handle the cpu's turn so inside of this else the first thing we need to do is create a while loop and we're going to say while true and while true is true which it is true we're going to say cpu choice is equal to random dot choice of possible numbers. So the numbers that are left, the CPU needs to randomly select one out of there, and then that is going to be their turn. The next thing we need to do is let us, the player, know what the CPU just picked. So we're going to print a line here with a new line character, and then say CPU choice 
and the CPU choice variable. Next, we need to have some sort of validation. That way, whatever number they have to choose, we need to make sure it's actually inside of possible numbers. Otherwise, this loop's gonna break and the whole game's gonna break because we already guessed five and then the CPU tried to do five. So to handle that, we're gonna say if the CPU choice in possible numbers, so if their number is inside of possible numbers, so if that's true, we're going to modify the array, pass in the CPU choice as the number and pass in the capital O as their turn. Next, we're going to remove that number that they just selected. So possible numbers dot remove and going to say CPU choice. We're going to increment the turn counter by one. So turn counter plus equal to one. And then we're going to just break out of this loop. So we're going to say break. So now we have the logic to operate the game and we know that we're going to be able to go and the CPU is going to go and it will be able to check to make sure that our turns are valid. The thing we don't have is a way to check if anyone has won the game at any point. So this is just going to go all the way until the whole thing's filled up and then it just kind of ends. So right now we need to have some sort of way to check for a winner. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go up here and define another function. We're going to say define function check for winner. The thing that we're going to pass in to check for winner is our game board variable. That way it can check, you know, the current combinations of the board and see if, you know, who's won. Now this is going to get a little complicated, maybe not complicated, but just it could, you could get overwhelmed really quick. What we're gonna do is define three sets of sections. We're gonna say X axis, and then we're gonna say Y axis, and then we're gonna do the cross wins. Here's what I mean when I say that. Okay, so we have our game board here, right? There are a huge number of ways to win, right? So we have X and we have O. So the, all the ways that O can win is this way, this way, this way along the X axis, this way, this way, this way along the Y axis, and then they can win cross, um, crossing this way and crossing this way. So that is eight total combinations that O can win. And obviously the same applies for X. To handle that, there's 16 different variations that can happen. We need to have a giant bunch of if else's for that. So let's go back to our um, function here and first address the X axis, which is going across left to right. So the first if we're gonna say, hey, if the game board at zero and zero, so the very first index is equal to, we're gonna check for X first. So if that's X, the game board at zero and one is equal to X and the game board at zero and two is equal to X. Then we know that the X has just won the game. So we're going to go ahead and print X has one. And then we're going to return X as that variable. I'm going to do one little example of each area, and then I'm going to just kind of blast through it and I'll show you guys how it looks at the end. So obviously for this exact same combination, O could also win. We're just going to do another else if here and kind of just print it and we're just going to remove some of the rubble. Go ahead and subtract that. Make sure that this is over here. We have a clothing parenthesis. And instead of saying X, we're just going to do capital O. So obviously O could win in the same way that X could. And we need to return O instead of X here. So now we have addressed both X or O winning the very, very top line of the board going left to right. Now, before we address the rest of the X axis cases, let's just go hop down to a Y axis. So obviously this is going to be another else if, and we're going to, let's address the very left column if they win going down. So if game board at zero, zero is equal to X and game board at one, zero is equal to X and game board at two and index zero is equal to X. Then we know that they have just won the leftmost column of the game. So we could do the exact same thing that we did before. So print X as one and go ahead and return X as the uh, winner of the game here. Obviously do this exact same thing, but for O and here we go. And we're going to finally say else if, and here let's do a cross one. So we're gonna do it from the upper leftmost corner all the way down to the bottom rightmost corner of the game. So we're going to say, hey, if the game board at zero, zero, so wait, zero, zero is equal to X and the game board at one, one is equal to X and the game board at two and two is equal to X. Then we know that once again, X is one and we can print that. Obviously do the same exact case for O and then I'm going to just quickly do all these and then I'll really explain it so that I don't rush you guys. Okay guys, I've just finished the function. So here we are, let me explain it very slowly. So here we are, we have our X axis section first, and this is why it's good to break it up into sections. That way it's nice and organized. So we have our very first line of the game and let me just bring up paint right here. That way I can explain as I go. 
Okay, guys, so here we have our game board, and this is kind of the coordinate system that we have set up with our two-dimensional right. With this x-axis right here, this one right here, that I went over earlier, this is addressing this case for the winner. Then we have our LCFs here as well. So this is the second line of the game right here. This is that winning combination. And the third combination right here is obviously going to address the line down here. So I'm gonna just pause here for just a brief second so you can, you know, maybe stop it and then try to catch up. 